Packers, welcome to my return. I think I'm going to be streaming more often now that the temperature is, temperature is slightly uh, risen. Got the uh, ISFP tree here, as always. And uh, welcome to the show. Let's uh, get some people talking in the audience. Let's get some likes up. Come on. So we can actually have a show. That'd be nice. It's a little cool. What's up, Duggo? <laughs> What's up, Stephanie? Duggo, once again, had, had the uh, very uh, first an echo, huh? Is there an echo? It's like weird. There shouldn't be one. Oh, an echo for you, but no echo. Okay, cool. Thanks. Uh, might be... Um, Stephanie and I uh, recorded uh, something earlier uh, for Ego Hacking Love. Uh, so... That might be... Um, there might be leftovers from uh, the settings that we had from earlier. So, open in two places. Okay, well, fair enough. It, it happens. It is what it is. But yeah, it's, it's really freaking cold, but it's fine. The work continues, regardless of uh, temperature. So, welcome to the show. Tonight's topic is uh, psychological racism. Psychological uh, prejudice. You know, I had the honor of uh, presenting to educators uh, Ucha for Children. And it's kind of a continuation of uh, the stream that we had uh, with our guest, uh, Michaela. And uh, Michaela, uh, who is an educator, uh, was on a stream uh, recently, probably towards the very beginning of the year very early in January, that stream, you guys can watch it if you want, but uh, within that stream, we're talking about how there's a lot of issues relating to uh, educating children in the school system, and you know, we all know that uh, the school system is very uh, mind temple related. The stream is here on the YouTube channel, just go to like, go to past lives and find it, you know, you'll find it. But it was basically discussing a case study with a particular ESFP child and the ESFP child's uh, struggles uh, that uh, the child was having uh, in, the, in the school system. And it's so interesting that because of all the problems that we have in society right now, it's, uh, well, it's getting worse before it's getting better the disease of fatherlessness uh, continues to inhibit the growth of children and quite honestly every passing generation it, we just end up far more developmentally behind psychologically speaking uh, as a race uh, boys and girls basically are, are end up like suffering at the hands of this uh, mind temple uh, driven uh, school system that we have and the mind temple the problem with the mind temple is that the mind temple makes some assumptions because it's God functions of uh, TI and SE where they have this perspective that they know best, as I've said uh, many times. And because they know best, they end up, or believe that they know best, they end up making a lot of assumptions, right? Now, it's, it's no secret that I've been biased against mind temple types, mind temple types being ESTJ, INFP, ISTP, and ENFJ. And I actually had the pleasure of uh, speaking with an INFP uh, gentleman uh, this evening. Very brilliant fellow, absolutely very brilliant fellow, entrepreneur, uh, comes from Germany, uh, he emigrated to the United States. Very fantastic, brilliant man. And it's definitely a true testament to my claim that, or at least my belief that the INFP archetype actually is, in my opinion, 
uh, the most intelligent of the 16 types, uh, for sure. But the problem with Mind Temple is their deadly sin of pride. It ends up blinding them to the consequences of uh, their own prejudice uh, within the school system. Oftentimes, as I had the honor of uh, speaking in front of a bunch of teachers, uh, explaining to them why psychological type is so important, explaining to them uh, UCHA for children, which is our personality test that we have for children for rapidly psychoanalyzing children, etc. Doing so is entirely necessary because it shows teachers, and most of them are Mind Temple, a couple of Soul Temple in there, but mostly Mind Temple, a lot of ISTP teachers, uh, a lot of ENFJ teachers, some INFPs, even the principal that was hosting us uh, was an INFP. So there's a, this huge uh, mind temple bias in the school system. And since they're predisposed to thinking that they know best, they end up projecting themselves and because they're, you know, they're the most uh, dedicated to learning, the most dedicated to education, they end up projecting themselves onto children and when it comes to people when it comes to people in the United States of America and I imagine it's the same in other Western society locations but in a school setting in a school setting for children right K through 12 right in a school system you will not find a more diverse place on the earth uh, for uh, psychological diversity we have all of the 16 personality types, as well as all of the different nurtures or octograms of each uh, potential combination of human being, boy or girl, for a total of 128 different combinations. I know I sound like Dave Powers uh, when I say that. Shout out to Dave Powers and his uh, work on uh, subtyping. Although I think he believes there's 512 combinations. I might get there one day, who knows, uh, but we're not there right now. But you take 16 personality types, you multiply it by two genders, okay? And then you multiply that by the four octogram variants. And that creates 128 different combinations of psyches. And each person is one of the 128. Each child in the school system is one of the 128. And based on, and, and children, especially like if they're uh, like elementary school age, their cognitive development is not really solidified. It's still pretty fluid uh, based on the environment that they uh, are being educated in, in the school system, as well as their home environment with their nuclear family, if there even is a nuclear family. Usually they're just being raised by single moms, let's be honest, or no parents whatsoever. And are in the foster care system. But public schools end up having a lot of challenges, like a lot of challenges. And these challenges end up getting worse and worse and worse. But in a school, in a school you will find the most diverse population uh, of uh, personality types in human beings within the school system. What better place what better place to, you know, collect all that data and actually just see just how diverse people really are. And teaching these teachers uh, this tool of UCHA to utilize just a very simple four question test for children. And we're, we're actually going to be deploying this uh, four question test for children on UCHA in the future. Hopefully this year, I, I, I believe it will be this year that we'll be doing it, but uh, you know, it's just four questions. It's and it, they're very simple questions to the children. It's um, one of the questions is, do you like being helped by other children or do you like to be the helper? You know, that, that helps determine if they're FI or FE, for example, that kind of a thing based on how help is. Uh, do you want to be chosen to play a game or do you want to just invite yourself to a game that's usually SE or NI, for example? And uh, my favorite one is reincorporating the marshmallow test. Um, the marshmallow test is pretty awesome because 
it, within the context of the marshmallow test, which is basically, do you want a marshmallow right now or do you want two marshmallows in 15 minutes? It helps uh, determine abstraction versus uh, concrete, etc. So these are just some examples of the questions that we ask the children and then we're able to psychoanalyze them pretty quickly and uh, then we know their type and then we give um, teachers bingo cards about how to talk to the children, how to eliminate conflict in the classroom with other children, etc. And uh, we've had these most amazing uh, success stories as a result of what we've done over time. Which is great. It's really cool to be able to do that. So when that happens, these teachers are being given tools for the very first time to be able to interface and teach these children specifically. However, it is having a type of a byproduct effect, like a, a separate effect, basically, where the teachers are, for the first time in their lives, truly being uh, confronted with the fact that these children are different. These children do not think like they do. These children, all of a sudden, some children work really well in the current educational environment, likely because they are members of the Mind Temple themselves. This is why ISTPs, ESTJs, ENFJs, and INFPs are usually the ones who actually have the highest grades, the highest GPA in schools, right? Because the public school system is actually designed around Mind Temple, entirely designed around Mind Temple. Like, for example, an extroverted thinking child, they're going to show their work when it comes to mathematics versus like an INFJ child, they're not really going to show their work. They're not going to. Like, they're just not going to. They're going to do it in their head, basically. And they oftentimes struggle with being able to utilize their extroverted thinking trickster uh, to actually show the work. My own mother, uh, she's an ISFJ, she has extroverted thinking trickster. And she would tell me when I was going, when I was going to public school, as a, as a small child, she's like, hey, just, just survive, just survive, just, just get through it. I mean, she told me about how she, she barely passed any math classes whatsoever and how she barely was even able to do math and still to this day, she can't do algebra. And she survived, she survived. But Mind Temple makes the assumption that all children are the same. It makes the assumption that all children are capable of being taught these skills and being able to excel at these skills. When the reality of the situation is, many of these children are being set up for failure, right? And it happens all the time, all the time. Because before my presentation, these teachers were basically in la-la land where they believed that whatever it is that they are teaching in the public school system is something that can easily be learned or grasped by any child that is in the classroom. And the reality of the situation is that's false. In fact, it's actually arrogant of uh, teachers in general, school boards in general, or the entire American public education system to actually do this. Um, it's wrong. It's wrong. It's absolutely wrong what they're doing. And oftentimes people don't even know or even realize what's going on. Need some help? All right. Someone puking next to me. Good times. An ENFJ.
an INTJ. So, anyway, the point I'm trying to make is, is that they don't even realize that the public school system is creating a type of uh, prejudice, type of prejudice against children. And they're not even aware of the fact that there are psychological minorities in the public school system whatsoever. Which, if you think about it, how the public school system is set up, it's actually akin to child abuse. The public school system is literally abusing children psychologically and creating a lot of unconscious focused children in the process. Maybe it's even uh, going so far as to actually create unconscious development because the child has to survive the public school system, especially if they're like an extroverted thinking trickster when it comes to mathematics like INFJs or uh, ISFJs, like my mother, who just really couldn't grasp the concepts and were accused of cheating when they weren't showing their work. And this ends up becoming a big problem over time. Really big problem. So, it just gets worse and worse and worse. One of, the, one of the biggest problems about Mind Temple is that these people won't even listen. They won't even listen to <laughs> parents. They won't listen to even the children, the, the children that they're actually trying to teach. There is a huge lack of listening, and it ends up becoming a, a huge problem. And then the child leaves the public school system after being basically abused by the public school system because the psychological minorities, and it doesn't have to be a psycho, like, because there is psychological minorities. I mean, for example, INTJs make up 1% of the population, but they have expert thinking parents, so they actually can do pretty well in school. And oftentimes they work to achieve and optimize their GPA. And, you know, it's all about academic achievement and all this bullshit, you know, that everyone's always talking about all the time. But then you have one of the most common types, ISFJs, who are at a severe disadvantage because of extroverted thinking trickster, even though they're very common. So because of this, humanity, or at least educators, are completely blind to the fact that they are abusing children because psychological minorities don't just exist in personality type, but they also exist in the cognitive functions themselves and what children are even able to cognitively do in an education system. I have an INFJ very close to me who is in the public uh, school system and he has similar struggles. It's to the point where he has actually conveyed to me that he doesn't want uh, to go to university, he doesn't want to go to college, he doesn't want to deal with any of that because he's really sick of the school system. And it's not a place where he can actually learn real skills. INFJs are all about skills and having skills and being very skilled. And that can be uh, a huge problem. And it just gets worse and worse and worse. You know, it's so funny because Mind Temple acts in a very um, affiliative way, not a very pragmatic way. And with them being so affiliative, not like the Soul Temple, because it's also really affiliative, um, they always have this belief that they're doing the right thing. They have the belief that they are educating properly. They have the belief that they're going all out. But you know, for, for the sake of the children and doing, doing right by the children. But they're not. They're not at all. They're not at all. And oftentimes teachers are blaming poor test scores on parents, blaming it on poor home situations, which, yeah, sure, some of that's true. Actually, a lot of that's true. Because while there's psychological racism, because there are these psychological minorities at the functional level in a school, 
There's also similar problems at home where parents are projecting themselves and projecting their own childhoods onto their own children and making assumptions about how to parent their children properly. This too ends up becoming a big problem over time. And it just gets worse and worse and worse. Real worse. That smells fantastic. Thanks. <laughs> so that's why we have our Mind Child nonprofit. No. <laughs> <laughs> they wish. So what ends up happening is that. Once we give these tools from our Mind Child nonprofit to these uh, to these teachers, it's kind of a wake-up call. They end up having this like big-time wake-up call about how, oh crap, these children really are different. Oh crap, now we actually know and actually can start to see how different these children actually are from one another, and they can actually start to see where the personality conflicts are occurring between you know, child to child, but also between teacher to child. You have, what, a, a classroom of 20 to 30 children to one teacher, and that one teacher has one personality type. How do you think it's gonna go in that classroom, right? How do you think it's gonna go? It's gonna go terribly. It's gonna go absolutely terribly. It's gonna blow up in their faces. So children at large are being victimized consistently. Consistently victimized while they are in school. Over and over and over. It's terrible. It's absolutely terrible. And then they turn 18, right? You know, the boys sign up for the selective service. They can't even drink alcohol, yet they're expected to die for their country. Something I remember uh, Immortal, the ESTP, complaining about consistently. God bless him. I miss that man. If you're still out there, Immortal, shout out to you, good sir. The Ego Hacker community misses you, and we hope you're well. But the thing is, though, is that given that Mind Temple is also a failure of like pragmatic children, like pragmatic children, which is 50% of the children in a classroom, pragmatic children are also basically ostracized and uh, not given an opportunity to learn in the way that they should be learning. That's another problem, right? So public school is literally a breeding ground for psychological racism. It is a breeding ground for psychological racism, consistently, where certain children are being shown preferential treatment, right? And it's whichever ones are participating in schools, are doing the academic achievement thing, etc. And that's not, that's not something that's, it, it's, just, it's just ridiculous. It's entirely ridiculous. And the problem is, is that most people don't even realize just how bad it really actually is. Are we really setting up the children for a good future, right? Already, due to fatherlessness, for example, they're not being parented properly. Do you think they're going to make great parents? Do you think they're going to make productive members of society? I mean, the ESTJ archetype, which is the one that is celebrated the most in public schools, right? the Tom Brady's of the world. And they are all about their academic achievement, but you know what they're so good at doing? Following the rules, following orders, being uh, cute little uh, automatons, you know, bred for society and the uh, service of society, basically. While the ESTPs, like Railgun, for example, are continuously abused and ostracized. What percentage of her unconscious focus, because she's UDUF, 
which is not a very good state of mind to be in because it's like basically mental survival mode that can breed conditions like uh, narcissistic personality disorder uh, in FI users or uh, borderline personality disorder in extroverted feelers, especially soul temple people. How much of the abuse that she has suffered in her life to get her to that mental state is due to that psychological racism in the school system? I imagine quite a lot. I imagine it's the majority. Sure, she'd have problems at home, but she'd also have problems at school. She couldn't escape to school. She couldn't escape to home. She couldn't escape. And if you, and if you have anti inferior and you feel trapped all the time, where do you think your brain is going to go? Your brain's going to adapt in some way, and then boom, all of a sudden you have UDUF. UDUF unconscious developed, unconscious focused, people are the people most likely to commit heinous crimes. They're the most likely to uh, commit suicide, for example. All because she was a psychological minority in a mind temple driven education system that gives preferential treatment to children that are just like them, to children that identify with the mind temple, basically. I have two soul temple children and one heart temple child. I'm hoping to have more children, definitely. And these children will have, each have their own struggles. Uh, and when it comes to public education system, it's so easy for any child to be victimized because you have teachers projecting their own personas, their own ways of doing things on the children and having these curriculi, curriculums, curriculi that are, that only benefit a very small percentage of the child population. Yet schools are the most psychologically diverse places in the United States of America, for example, or in basically anywhere else. It's the most, uh, it's the most uh, psychologically diverse. And right now we have this problem where there is no tolerance. There's just no tolerance for what uh, Mind Temple and their uh, psychiatric care uh, would call neurodivergent. Neurodivergent people. All neurodivergence means is that you are a psychological minority. That's all that means, okay? That's all neurodivergence is. If you think otherwise, you're full of shit. It's pathetic. It's ridiculous. And you know what they do to neurodivergent children? They put children on drugs. They put children on Ritalin. They put children on Adderall. They put children on amphetamines. They put children on these things. And because of that, because of that, it forces these children to cognitive transition into a side of their mind that is not their ego because their ego is not accepted in the public school system at all. Which, guess what? is a form of child abuse. That is a result, a direct result of psychological prejudice, psychological racism. The public school system has to be completely redone. That's why we're working really hard with this nonprofit to make sure that we are educating teachers, educating school boards, educating administrative staff, educating bus drivers even, and hopefully educating parents about just how neurodivergent any person, any child actually is. Because in any situation, a child will be neurodivergent in some case. Like my mother, an ISFJ, while she's one of the most common personality types out there, she is technically neurodivergent in a mathematics class, right? And where is there support for her? There is no support. There is no support. 
And yet, we're so dependent on the education system. For example, you can't practice law legally without uh, passing the bar exam. Let's say a friend of mine, for example, got into a, uh, a situation where they, they got a ticket, a traffic ticket. I would be breaking the law. It would be illegal for me to represent them in court and argue on their behalf. I'm an ENTP. ENTPs are naturally good at debate and argument. And we do the research, find what the precedents are, and basically make the case in front of the judge, which the judge itself is also almost always an ESTJ. Almost always an ESTJ. And, but I, I don't have the freedom in this so-called land of freedom. I don't have the freedom to go in there and represent them because I didn't go through the Mind Temple system to become bar certified to be able to legally practice law, for example. Again, it is psychological racism. Because we have people, children, who are forced to go through this education system and try to qualify with a high GPA and a good SAT test score to get into XYZ school, to get a degree, right, that they have to have in order to get certain jobs. But again, it's still all under complete Mind Temple control. And if you don't act like Mind Temple, if you don't act like an ESTJ, ISTP, ENFJ, or an INFP, if you don't act like these people because of this Mind Temple bias in our uh, society, if you don't act like them, you're treated as if you're not normal. You're treated, uh, you, you're segregated. You are the victim of prejudice by default. Doesn't matter the color of your skin. Doesn't matter. What really matters is the color of our brains. That's what really matters, actually. And that continues to make things worse over and over and over. You know, a lot of people, yeah, fatherlessness is a huge problem. It absolutely is a huge problem. But it's not the only one. The education system itself is worthless. The education itself, it's so funny because they... The education system will talk about how great Martin Luther King is, or we'll talk about how great Frederick Douglass is, right? Or Harriet Tubman, right? I mean, it's, it's February right now, Black History Month. Why is Black History Month the shortest month of the year? Have you ever wondered that? I wonder that. So, you know, these people are celebrated, but what do these people end up having in common? Mind temple, mind temple. So even as African Americans were persecuted for just the color of their skin, the ones that ended up being accepted by white society, mind temple white society, were the ones who acted like mind temple, who bought into the mind temple crap, basically. and it still happens to this day. Mind Temple has succeeded in selling us this lie about th how they know best, and it's the best way, when in reality situation, it's not. Especially when you have scary statistics out there uh, that say that, you know, if a woman is college educated, she has a 90% chance of divorcing you, of initiating divorce to you. That's scary, that's really scary. But when you look at personality type, when you look at the different psyches of different people and the different nurtures, basically, the children are not being nurtured properly. The children across all of Western society are actually being set up for failure because children's minds, every mind, in some way, shape, or form, is being unaccepted. They are being treated as if they are unacceptable. Which is unacceptable. You know, it's no wonder that, you know, I'm Heart Temple and Heart Temple is naturally biased against Mind Temple. 
you know, some people say, oh, you know, Hard Temple wants unlimited freedom, which is true, versus the peace and control that uh, Mind Temple brings to the table. But the problem is, is that we can't assume that Mind Temple is incorruptible, basically. Because it's, it's, it's not. It, it is corrupt. It is very corrupt. This is why we have an oligarchy within the United States of America instead of a constitutional republic. I actually uh, just recently uh, joined a seminar where there was an attorney, uh, a defender, uh, who basically said that the Bill of Rights is officially defunct. It is comatose, it's basically dead, it does not matter in the court system, the police can do whatever they want and there's no consequences. The police can take your property, the, the police can beat you, the police can do whatever they want to you and you absolutely do not have rights and you cannot even defend your constitutional rights in a local court system with a local judge who is statistically likely to be an ESTJ anyway, right? The only people who end up being lawyers are the high extroverted thinkers, the ones willing to do the training, the, you know, the extroverted thinking parents, the extroverted thinking heroes, willing to go in that direction anyway to get that degree so that they can legally practice law, for example. ENTP lawyers are actually pretty rare. I used to know one, his name was Alexander Jean Turco, aka the Matani. He ran Goon Swarm and EVE Online. Good man, regardless of the scandals, after scandal after scandal that he suffered that ultimately took him down, but fantastic, brilliant man. Very, br very brilliant man, very malevolent. He was UD. And then he went U to UF a few times and uh, led to a lot of scandals when he was UDUF. So I worked very hard to stay out of UDUF as much as possible, even though admittedly so re recently, I have been mostly UDUF recently, but I'm pulling myself out of it and getting back to UDSF again. I can feel it coming back, which is good. But you know, when you're sitting there speaking to a lot of teachers and it's always Mind Temple, the ones that are complaining about racism the most. They're always the ones complaining about intolerance the most. Have you ever noticed that about Mind Temple? They're the ones who like to put on this big show that they're so accepting of other people, you know, in the education system. And it's all about diversity. It's all about, you know, all these random new genders, blah, 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 all this crap that you hear about, right? When it's false. They're actually the least accepting. So I had the honor of explaining to educators that they were actually abusing children. Think about that. When you have somebody from the Heart Temple calling you out in front of all of your colleagues for abusing children, for being racist yourself, psychologically racist, in front of all of your colleagues, Because you, as Mind Temple, who claims to know best, is actually entirely ignorant of how children, all children, are neurodivergent in some capacity. What do you think is going on? What do you think is going to happen? You know, it's funny going into that meeting. We had a lot of success stories racked up, where a bunch of teachers that were present in that meeting. We're already using Ucha for children. We're already using these uh, bingo cards for de-escalating conflict with children in their classroom and how if they just follow the bingo cards, they get immediate results from the children. Immediate results, immediate relief from the children. Where children are all of a sudden actually wanting to participate in the classroom. Whereas previously, they were doing anything they could to escape the classroom, actually. If it weren't for those uh, success stories, I likely would have been thrown out of the room. But we had those success stories where I had teachers standing up for me and what I was presenting 
uh, to these people. And I did the presentation, and all I was doing is telling the truth. You know, Mind Temple, with their pride, they really have a hard time listening to the truth and accepting the truth, especially when they have the finger being pointed at them about their culpability and how they're abusing children, their own children that they claim to care about so much, but they don't. But then even then, guess what? The teachers themselves, oftentimes their hands are tied. There's so many rules, so many, so, so much red tape, so many regulations. The curriculum is so controlled by the Department of Education. Like George W. Bush's uh, No Child Left Behind crap, which has further added even more damage because they don't know what they're doing. They absolutely do not know what they're doing. Isn't it funny that George W. Bush is an ESFJ, a TI inferior, expecting everybody to listen to him, but he won't listen to anybody? Or Ronald Reagan before him, two presidents before him, also an ESFJ? Kind of interesting how that works. It's hard for SE Critic to hear just how much harm that they are actually providing, that they are actually doing, but it's necessary. You know, if you're on, if you're, if you're watching the stream or watch it later, you may be a parent right now, or one day you may become a parent. Maybe you're a teacher and whatnot. But the reality of the situation is, is that it is our responsibility as humanity to literally go out of our way to understand the minds of ourselves and others, especially children. For example, I have attended many parent-teacher conferences uh, on behalf of my clients where I explain to the educators, hey, guess what? This child that you think is neurodivergent and you're trying to put on drugs, you're trying to encourage these parents to put on drugs, the reality of the situation is this, this is how they behave. This is how your behavior is incompatible with this child and is actually causing the problem that you don't like. And at first the educator doesn't believe me, but then I psychoanalyze them on the spot and then I tell them all about themselves, even to the point where I've reduced a few teachers to tears, where they realized, oh my God, what have I done? What have I become? It's especially hard for those tenured teachers who have been around for 10 plus years in their school district strict. It's even harder for 20 year plus ENFJ teachers to come to the realization that they have been doing it wrong and be, having to question their ego investments about how many children that they themselves have set up for failure, how many children that they have made statistically more likely to be in prison or addicted to drugs. Get involved with teen pregnancy. Teen pregnancy, drugs, these things, gangs, what are they? They're escapes. It's escapism, where the children are trying to escape. Escape the hell that is public school, as well as the hell of their homes but there is no escape. The way our society works right now is that there absolutely is no escape. There is no escape for children at all. You know, and it's so, so easy for parents to blame the schools, to blame the teachers. It's so easy for the teachers to blame the parents. The problem is, is that the system itself has to be blamed. The system itself is entirely ignorant of psychological type. So I'd like to issue a challenge to the ego hacker community. We made the ego hackers channel. Why did we do this? The ego hackers YouTube channel, which is a side YouTube channel to this one, is basically just the science. That's all it is, just the science. None of me, and my opinions and my machinations and my biases, right? 
It's just the raw science. It's just raw education. Use this channel. Subscribe to it, please. Watch those videos. Share those videos. They are designed to be small, easy to digest, and very shareable. Share them with educators. Seriously, do it. Be like, hey, this is, this is how my child acts. This is how it works. Here's what you can do to improve a better outcome, a better learning environment for my child. Or here is my child's friends. Here's where they are at, right? Here's what Ucha for Children looks like when we have it out. Oh, uh, CJ Giordano, it absolutely is. It absolutely is. Point is, is that like, if we cannot get a grip on our education system, and we have already doomed millennials. Millennials were known as the lost generation. Why was that? Well, because millennials at the time were the most fatherless generation that there was. Millennials actually worked hard to bring back male devotion. Millennials actually tried very hard to not be like their parents and not create, you know, and not uh, continue to perpetuate fatherlessness. Millennials worked really hard. Millennial men did, but they failed. That's why we have the red pill or the black pill or MGTOW, that kind of thing, you know, from that side of the equation. I talk a lot about gender dynamics, intersexual dynamics on uh, this channel to the point where I've gotten a lot of hell for it, especially the season 31 playlist, which is the most controversial pieces of content that I've ever created that are publicly available. And the pieces of content that I've created for uh, our men's group and our women's group is even far more controversial than that. But we are working very hard to fix relationship problems, to fix the family at home as best we can. But the problem is though, unless the education system changes at the same time, unless the education system changes at the same time, along with how the family is changing at home at the same time, it's not really going to do anything. It's not really going to help very much. It's not going to do much. What it's going to do is it's just going to increase the divide between teachers and parents, right? When the teachers themselves, even if we bring the system into schools, and they are using it, they're starting to use it, they're starting to understand, they're starting to see its value. If things change in the education system, things are still not changed at the home. And that too is a big problem. It's all got to be done at the same time. We have to have mass cultural change in order to achieve fundamentally transforming this society or else we will lose this society. We will lose everything. We will lose the earth itself. Because children right now don't have a future. Children get to look forward to dropping fertility, increasing death rates, lower lifespan, lower quality of life. That's what they get to look forward to. They get to look forward to drugs and teen pregnancy, unwanted pregnancy, rape or murder. They get to look forward to war. Do you really want this future for your children? You know, I've been working really hard put a stop to these things on the education side as well as within the family. I work very hard to that end. But the reality of the situation is, is that I cannot do it alone. I can't do it alone. 
I need this community to rise to the occasion. I need this community to be willing to get the word out. That's why we created the Ego Hackers YouTube channel. That's why we created our courses, to help get the word out. That's why our most recent course, How to Type Yourself, which is available at howtotypeyourself.com, teaches people how to psychoanalyze themselves and others. That's why we developed Ucha for children. That's why we developed Ucha to make it fast and easy to type. Problem is, is that to get the best value out of Ucha, it's kind of better for you to have someone who has the most life experience with you to take that test for you on your behalf. And then you'll be more likely to arrive at a more accurate answer when you use Ucha because people don't know themselves. As much as people claim that the 16 personalities test at 16personalities.com is better than Ucha, they too have the same problem. If you give bad input to a test, you're going to get bad output. But humans on their own, especially INTJs, especially INTJ women, they don't know how to give the proper input to the test to get the 100% accurate output. We're still working on improving that and figuring out ways how to do that. We keep making huge discoveries in the science some of which were just shared with the, uh, the men's group uh, last night where I exposed how the male sexual strategy and the female sexual strategy is actually expressed at the cognitive function level because of that. Because now, we, for the first time, we understand exactly what the male and female differences are within the cognitive functions. And we can explain the difference between a female INTJ and a male INTJ, for example. And we're trying to package it up into something that is easily digestible and easily distributed, like the Ego Hackers YouTube channel, right? That's what we're trying to do. Make it easier for people to use. Because most people are uneducated. And of course they would be, because they're all treated in some manner, at one point in time or another, as if they're neurodivergent within the education system. So they're not actually learning, and thus their growth and their education is ultimately stunted. Their growth ends up becoming stunted over time. Because of that, children right now don't have a future. They don't. If you want children, your children, to have a future, put in the work. Get the message out there. You don't have to share them videos off of the CS Joseph YouTube channel. In fact, I recommend you share videos off of the Ego Hackers channel because it's just the raw science. You have to deal with crazy Mr. Chase and his uh, biases because it's quite unbiased over there at the Ego Hackers YouTube channel. We designed it to make the content shareable, easily digestible. Get it out there, get it in people's hands quickly spread the word make sure that people understand just how different they are from each other so that culture can change even chris taylor god bless him he made a good point recently actually it's like a year and a half ago where he stated that you know if people in general don't know the science they're going to fall behind they're going to fall behind entirely it's a new era of psychology that is seen as something as so fringe and so risky on the part of Mind Temple because they're scared of it. They're scared that all of their ego investments are entirely challenged. It's scary when your ego investments are challenged. It's scary when you're an ENFJ female teacher and realize that you've done nothing but ruin children for the past 20 years of your career. It's terrifying. It's absolutely terrifying when well, you find out that your teaching style and what you have taught in the school has actually harmed children more so than helped them. And it's really hard for the FE hero to accept. Their ego is just under complete assault at that moment. That's why we have to educate the educators. We have to educate, re-educate Mind Temple into the truth.
We have to educate the people who are running the education system. You know, the system is being pretty well adopted in areas like Saudi Arabia, South Korea, for example, where other nations are taking my work and realizing the benefits. The United States of America, for example, in our education system is falling behind. I even had an opportunity actually with a university in Australia. As part of their Psychology 101, the very first psychology class offered in the university, my companion guide that I released, companion guide to, uh, version 2.0, edition 2.0, is actually one of the course materials that they utilize in uh, teaching Psychology 101, all right? So they're starting to get it. They're starting to see the value. They're starting to see what it's all about. It is happening, but it's happening too slow. And it's happening slowest here in the United States of America. Slowest, where Mind Temple has absolute unfettered control over education, over the laws, over the regulations, over the rules entirely. And it needs to fundamentally change. And I can't do it by myself. I just have a YouTube channel with 65,000 subs. We have our uh, 2,000 plus person Discord server, the Ego Hackers Discord, which if you want to join, you should. Discord.gg forward slash Ego Hackers. But we need people, we need volunteers, especially with our nonprofits. We need people's help. If you care about this movement, please help. I'm not asking you for money, although money helps. It keeps the lights on so we can keep telling the truth. But at the same time, we need people willing to take action. Michaela at the Mind Child Institute, she needs your help. She's doing most of the work by herself. And my team is doing our best to support her. We're lacking in manpower. Sure, we're lacking in funds. We'll always lack in funds, but we're really lacking in manpower. We need people to help. We need people to help start changing the education system as much as we need people to start changing things at home with families, to keep families together, to keep fathers staying under their roofs so that the children have a better future. It's critical, but we need more people. Join our Discord. Find out how you can get involved, please. Send me a direct message. You can direct, anyone can direct message me anytime on Discord. And I'll typically answer. Although if you ask me what your type is, <laughs> I'll go, I'll tell you to go to howtotypeyourself.com or I'll tell you to go to csjoseph.life forward slash essentials so you can get a coaching session and we'll go through the process, right? To get you verified. Sure, we can do that. We absolutely can do that. But we need people who actually care. We need people to really actually put in the work and help us move this movement forward. We can't do it by ourselves. There are people on the team, the volunteers that we have, they're burnt out. They're really burnt out. We need more people to help. I get that I'm a very controversial figure. I mean, shoot, like, there are people in my social circle who refer to me as the Andrew Tate of the Pacific Northwest. <laughs> Which I don't like being called because I'm not interested in making my money off of uh, the sex trade, like OnlyFans or cam girls or pornography or any of that because I loathe pornography. Pornography is a disease. It should be illegal. It's a problem. It continues to be a problem. What we need 
are people who are willing to help. Help children, help educators, help families. That's what we need. You don't have to agree with me. You don't even have to like me. It's not about me. I don't care. What I care about is results. That's what I care about. And we need results. We need results now. There isn't any time. Those of you who are like really young, you know, 18 to 30 in your youth, your young adulthood, like you think you, think you got time? No, you don't have time. There is no time. There is no time. There's absolutely no time, especially if you're a woman. There's no time. You've, you have even less time, okay? Because a woman's prime is 20 to 25, for example. A man's prime is 35 to 42. You, know, you see what I'm saying? It's different. It's different. But regardless of whether you're prime or not, it doesn't matter. We need people who care in this community, okay? You know, like... We work very hard within this community to represent the interests of future generations. You know, millennials were sold down river by Gen X and by boomers. And we were known as the lost generation, the aimless generation, right? And then Gen Z, do you think they have it better? They don't have it better. Just look at TikTok. TikTok is not, is not helping very much at all because like for example like women for example are using TikTok to like do all these little tests to figure out how to test your man if he actually loves you or whatever and it's like pre-made shit tests basically uh, for your relationship which actually ends up sabotaging women and sabotaging their relationships and further contributing to fatherlessness in as much as the education system is also contributing to fatherlessness in as much as the education system is literally robbing children of their future in as much as their families are also robbing children of their future because of psychological racism because of this ignorance of psychology when the reality of the situation is is that we still owe it to ourselves as a race to do unto others as we would have them do unto us, okay? Doesn't matter if they're doing unto us based on what we prefer. We have to be an example and do unto others that way anyway, regardless. Because once you know the psychology, you're responsible. Because knowing the psychology literally does empower you. It gives you great power. And just like it says in Spider-Man, with great power comes great responsibility. Therefore, because we have this knowledge, it is our responsibility as the ego hacker community to actually bring out this information and bring this knowledge to as many people as we can because otherwise our children will not have a future. It's just that simple. It's that simple. This science is literally the solution to so many problems. But people are either ignorant of it or they're scared of it. And yeah, in some ways they have every reason, every right to be scared of it, especially when it challenges their ego investments. When I'm looking down at teachers for what they have done and what they're doing, and they have no idea how much harm to children they are causing, they have no clue. And it just gets worse and worse and worse and worse. Our society is in a state of decay. And what comes after decay? Well, despair. And it becomes a problem. What is this? ENFJ. <laughs> so, anyway. <laughs> Actually, an NPC. <laughs> Look, I don't care about controlling people's lives. I don't care about that. I'm all about personal freedom. You do you. But the reality of the situation is, unless people know the truth about everyone's souls, everyone's brains, everyone's identities, unless people know the actual truth and actually allow people to be who they are, instead of trying to shape them into these faux copies of Mind Temple, for example, within this society, it's just gonna get worse. And we're in this downward spiral decay. It's just absolutely terrible.
Oh, you're talking jobs. It's it, 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 it's fine. It's fine. It, I'm just stating what my interest here. I I don't benefit from it. I do a lot of volunteer work. A lot of people don't realize that I do an insane amount of pro bono work. A sa insane amount. I would say probably two thirds of my time in terms of this science is pro bono. It's free because I care that much. It's got to get out there. All right? I only take what I need. I really only just take what I need. Even on paper, like, you know, while this is a business, technically, even on paper, I make the least amount of money out of everyone on my team, short of the volunteers. You know? And I do a lot of volunteer work. You know, averaging, let's see here, gosh, per month and just free lecture content that I do for the nonprofits per month, it's, uh, gosh, it's, it's 12 hours. 12 hours of cutting edge lectures in terms of the family, just the family piece, not even including the education piece, just the family oriented piece that I do uh, at one of our nonprofits is 12 hours of lectures. And the amount of research and amount of time spent to prepare for those lectures, as well as you know, sharing from my own life experience as things and problems that I encounter in my life to be able to solve those problems. Many times people tell me, oh, Mr. Chase, You've had failed relationship after failed relationship after failed relationship. What makes you so credible, says Mind Temple, what makes you so credible as to think that you can even help people in your relationships, in their relationships, because you have so much, you have failure after failure after failure. It's like, well, because those failures lead to lessons learned, because I can tell people what not to do. And I'm getting closer and closer to being able to tell people what to do. But I can absolutely tell them what not to do. There is value in failure. In fact, there is more value in failure than there is success. Because if someone's out there claiming success, they are one of the 16 personality types. They're one of the 128 combinations of total cognition out there. And the advice towards success that they would provide will only benefit one of the 128 combinations out there because their perspective is only one 128th of the available perspectives out there. This is why we have the, uh, there is um, like the ultimate learning technique, uh, I think is what we called it. It's actually a, a video here on the YouTube channel just go watch it. But basically I make the argument that if you want to rapidly improve yourself in terms of getting success in your life, go learn from other people who have the same type as you. Read their books, concern, consume their content and learn how they became successful so you too can be successful. And then share your success with people just like you. But there's not a better teacher than failure. We learned this from Star Wars The Last Jedi. That was uh, Yoda's uh, final lesson to Luke Skywalker, is that failure is the greatest teacher, right? Because Luke Skywalker failed, right? That's a very important lesson, a lesson that matters, a lesson that everybody needs to know. I'm not perfect. I got flaws. I have some huge hangups. In fact, the last uh, live stream that I did on this channel that before the Typing Famous people that I did earlier today actually was me talking about, yet again, more of my failures, right? At least I can be honest with myself and not lie to myself about my own flaws and failures because there are so many people who are afraid of even admitting that they have failures and flaws and hangups, etc. So failure is important. Pay attention to people's failures more than their successes because you really can learn from other people's mistakes. It is possible. It's really hard for an extroverted sensing demon like myself to do that, 
or ENFPs to do that because oftentimes we have to learn our own hard lessons and there and because we learn from our own mistakes instead of learning from other people's mistakes we can at least say with our expert intuition hero hey don't make the same choices I made okay that's how it works and that's why it's important it's absolutely critical guys you have to know this all right understand understand what's going on understand what the risks actually are so in summary psychological racism psychological prejudice is absolutely a thing it's a thing in families especially nuclear families as parents are projecting themselves onto their children and it's inhibiting them from actually nurturing their children properly it's happening in the education system where children are not being nurtured properly by the education system either because of this huge mind temple bias in the education system or the huge personal bias of parents within nuclear families if nuclear families even exist anymore due to the widespread fatherlessness that has absolutely plagued uh, everybody starting really bad with the millennials it's even worse with gen z do you think alpha generation is going to have it any good alpha generation is completely and utterly screwed they're screwed okay if we don't work as a community right now if we don't answer this call i mean do you honestly think you're going to be able to be proud and happy of your grandchildren no no you won't no you won't society is ending folks this is the twilight of society right now if we don't repent right now and repent of our ways if we don't learn these things we won't have a future our children will not have a future i mean like for example like in 2005 I got student loans. 2005 was the only year that you could get variable interest rate loans on student loans. Variable interest rate loans. It was during uh, when subprime mortgage loans, variable interest rate loans on homes happened and it led to the subprime mortgage crisis uh, that started in 2009 and kept going for many years. They called it the Great Recession, etc. And people lost their homes over it. And it, 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 and I ended up homeless uh, because of it, actually. It was a huge contributing factor to my homelessness when I was homeless. And when that went down, I was still having to pay 10% interest rates on my student loans. 10%. Do you know how debilitating that is? You can't even file bankruptcy on student loans. That's just how much control Mind Temple has over the education system you see and that can happen again it will happen again because if there's one thing that mind temple has is the deadly sin of pride and they think they know best they end up repeating the same mistakes over and over and over unless we can actually get this movement out there and get people educated on psychological type the psychological racism will continue the prejudice will continue and our children will not actually have a future. So, if you're watching this stream right now, please go to discord.gg forward slash ego hackers. Join the Discord server. Get other people to join the Discord server. Get educated. Go participate in the community. Find out how you can be involved. Find out how you can volunteer with our nonprofits to continue to assist us. It's super important. It's absolutely critical. Now, if you folks have that are on the stream right now, if you have any questions uh, relating to what I have just said, now would be the time. Now would be the time to ask those questions in the stream chat. And uh, I'll see about answering as many as I can, but make sure that these questions are related to the content of the stream, please. Related. Keep them related. I will not answer questions that are not related. Not going to do that. All right. So, if you have any questions, 
Oh, I do enjoy Alan Watts. I very much enjoy an Alan Watts. He is a, uh, an INFP. Very fantastic fellow. Very fantastic fellow. Okay. How can people volunteer to help uh, Mind Child? There is the Education uh, Special Interest Group, and they should be uh, interfacing with uh, Miss Michaela about that. And <laughs> folks, she is a single mother with two small children, and she's still doing this. <laughs> like, Michaela is awesome. Okay, she needs help. Seriously. Huge, huge thing. Oh, uh, hold on. Trying to get my thing here. Do you think mind temple dominance in schools leads to heart temple, soul temple, extremism, supremacy complexes out of school? Yes, absolutely. FI child superiority complex and INTJs, especially among INTJ women, which basically cancels them out of the sexual marketplace where they end up being the victim of pump, being pumped and dumped over and over is absolutely a problem. Uh, all right. Is evangelism guilty of the same? Absolutely it is. Absolutely. Uh, don't get me started about the church's contributions to the problem. Absolutely it's a huge issue. And I haven't even gotten to that point. And I might even actually make an entire channel just devoted to that. To like how churchianity has done nothing but destroy everything. And churchianity actually is the justification oftentimes that Mind Temple utilizes uh, in the education system and the legal system. A solution to bring back masculinity? Well, get involved in the men's group. We, in the men's group, we are rehabilitating men uh, back into their masculine, okay? If you want to become a masculine man, we have the absolute best resources in the world. In the world. No one is doing it better than us, than our men's group. So join the men's group. You can get access to it by getting into our uh, sexuality special interest group on our Discord server. Okay. Do you think INTJs looking for getting none of their origin at school commit reverence, colonization, and begin mistyping everyone they look up to as Heart Temple INTJ? Yes, I do. How can you start helping? Join the Discord, join uh, the Education uh, Special Interest Group, or join the Sexuality uh, Special Interest Group and get started there. And then if you, uh, and then the leaders of those special interest groups uh, speak with them and they will point you in the right direction. That's one way you absolutely can do it. We're not on that, right? Uh, you can be if you want. Oh, so yeah, we're back there. All right. <laughs> ENFP, little wrath type. He's like, oh, we're not on that. And I'm like, it doesn't matter. I can legally record you as long as I'm in it. Because that's the law. Will the warrior be needed for the age of Aquarius? Okay, that's not real. But do you agree that we're in the crisis era? The fourth book, Turning, says absolutely. If so, how crucial uh, is bringing back masculinity to solving uh, this crisis era? It's it's central. It's required. In fact, it's 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 the main issue. Bringing back masculinity has to come first. Nothing is going to happen until that happens first. That's why we spend we spent the majority of our efforts bringing back masculinity first and foremost. Uh, Malachi chapter 4 verses 5 and 6 is very clear about what's going to happen if uh, we don't bring back masculinity. And that prophecy basically states the entire earth will be destroyed. Basically. So yeah, that's, that's a big issue as well. So, all right. Well, looks like the questions are dying down then. So uh, I guess I will uh, end the stream then. So Thank you all. Oh, hold on. Uh, wouldn't implementing the system of perfect psychological understanding in school give us too perfect of a society? No, it'll just lead to new problems, that different, a different set of problems, because new levels bring new devils. No, it's not, like, seriously, come on. Any options for cultivating uh, masculinity in your teenager? Yes, go through our men's program, learn the lessons to increase your own masculinity, so you can confer that masculinity onto your sons. All right, uh, okay. Okay, why am I attracted to an ESFP as an INFJ? Well, you're probably mistyping somebody there. Uh, okay, cool. All right, well, looks like that's it for the questions tonight. Thank you all for watching and listening, and I'll see you guys next time. Later.